Good evening, everyone. Hey, can you stand with us as you get, as you all got comfortable? <laughs> Psalm 22.3 says, yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of your people. And I love that verse. Um, and other translations say, um, you inhabit the praises of your people. And then there's, um, so I'm looking, at, you know, everything up. I love to dig deep with the scripture that just speaks to me. Um, and that, that scripture means that the Lord dwells when we worship. He like sets up shop because he loves, he desires for us to worship. And so we can actually invite the Holy Spirit right here in this place to dwell among us um, with our praises when we lift our voices to sing. And so um, I just want to give us just a few seconds to kind of center your mind focus and allow yourself to just lean in to the next moment so that you can just worship with no distractions. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in this place to be glorified tonight. Oh, we welcome you here. Sing, let our praise be your welcome and let our songs be a sign come on tell them we are here for you Jesus oh we are here for you yeah that's good sing let your breath come from heaven and fill our straight to him now. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one 
that is our prayer tonight. Let your holy fire fall in this place.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Jason. I am the new guy. This is the end of my second week 
in this church family and in this role, and it's really great to be at this point. Now, I was meeting Michael Ryan for the first time before this started, and he told me that he still feels like he's a new guy, even though he started at Willow Wheaton in 1985, if I'm not mistaken. Willow overall, yeah, we weren't even in existence then. At Willow overall in 1985, and he has a new guy mindset. I love that, but I am literally a new guy. And it's my joy to be with you here all tonight. Um, I wanna go back to the, the worship team for a moment and how they led us as we enter into this vision night. Because when we look ahead, when we think about the vision that God might have for us and where we, where we could go, it's a, it's a time where we have to kind of get our hopes up again. We have to get our hope back because we look back at everything that we've been through and we've got some baggage around us and we're like, I don't know if I can go there. I don't know if I want to go there. And we have to fight within ourselves to have hope again. And I think that the worship team did a phenomenal job of preparing us tonight for that. Yeah. And specifically the song Gratitude. There's no better way than reawakening hope than to have gratitude. And so I want to I give you homework that you need to do before we finish tonight, okay? Uh, this is the only multitasking that's allowed tonight, all right? And, and I did it. I did it during the worship set, and so now I'm going to invite you in, and you'll see the reason why. But one of the great things about gratitude is that you can attach that to a memory. And I want to ask you tonight, as we go about this experience, to think about the memory Maybe it's your greatest church memory, or maybe it's the, the greatest memory that God gives you tonight of church life in your past, okay? Could be at Willow, could be anywhere. But ask the Spirit to give you a memory, a positive memory of church, give it a name, and share it with somebody after you leave tonight. So here's mine. I had the privilege of marrying young. So Jody and I got married young, out of college, and I was 21 years old. And I'm going to say my best church memory, she doesn't even know this, is our, our wedding. Now that's an easy cop-out, I know. You're like, I'm going to choose my baptism, I'm going to choose. And you can, that's okay. But, but I'm, I'm choosing this in a different way. I'm choosing the, the greatest church memory is the, the worship service of our wedding because we were able to serve communion together. And so as much as I loved the vows, Jody, I loved sharing communion together and seeing all your family and your friends and being with the pastors and sharing communion. And that was awesome. And ever since that day, God has continued to have Jody and I share communion time and time again with people. And so it's really, really rich. And so the name that I'm going to give it is First Marriage Moment with Jesus and Jody. That's my memory. So you do the same tonight, okay? And I'm really serious about this. This is an important thing for us to do. So with that being said, welcome again to Vision Night. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to watch a, a vision casting video from our senior pastor, Dave Dummett, here in a moment. And that'll be on the screen up here. And it's going to give us a picture of what's happening at Willow across the board and where are we going at Willow. And it's really, really good. And then from that, we're going to get into some vision through programming and vision through ministry sharing. And Sandy Riggs is going to share. Lane McLaughlin is going to share. I'm going to share. We're going to kind of share those updates. And then we'll segue from that, and I will close the evening with some local vision for us here at Willow Wheaton. We'll come out of that in prayer. We're going to huddle up and pray. Uh, and then we'll finish with a glorious worship song, and then you can go home and you can share your memory with somebody. How does that sound? All right, very good. Thank you for being here. And with that being said, let's go to Senior Pastor Dave Dummett and the overall vision of Willow Creek. Well, here at Willow, our mission is to love God, love people, and change the world. And so we've been spending this entire year not just talking about our mission statement, but intentionally taking next steps as a church to, to live it out in practical ways. And so early, early in the year, we focused on what it means to love God through the practices of, of baptism, communion, studying God's word, weekend worship, and, and giving generously. And it's pretty cool. We had 25,000 people that joined us in person across our campuses for Good Friday and, and Easter. 
Um, we, we've had 256 people been baptized since January. Just some amazing things happening. And then over the summer, we, we zeroed in on the changing the world part of our mission statement. The idea that that we want to be a church focused not on our, our just our seating capacity, but our sending capacity. How can we change the world? And so we we kicked things off with the celebration of hope right there after Easter, where we were able to celebrate and engage with our global partners. And, uh, if you remember, if you were here, we, we filled one million envelopes of seed packs with that, that ended up supporting 200,000 families in Zambia and in South Africa. We were able to give $1.6 million to support the work being done by our ministry partners locally and globally. And then in May, in May we also launched our partnership with Team World Vision. In Willow, we've assembled the largest team of world-changing runners that World Vision has ever had. And we're training for the Chicago Marathon, raising money to build wells for clean water that will serve our partners in India. And I gotta be honest, out of everything I've talked about so far, this is the one that's got me the most <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> but I'm having fun training. Anyway, we also had almost 400 people step up to serve for the first time on a volunteer team here at Willow. 400 people saying, I, I don't just go to church, I am the church. That's incredible. And then, as a church, we collected 3,000 backpacks and hundreds of pounds of school supplies for kids heading back to school this fall, which then leads us to right now. And as we head into the fall, we want to focus on the, the loving people part of our mission statement, the loving this community of Christ followers we call the church. You've heard us talking about this thing called Rooted, and this fall, Rooted is it's really our number one focus. We want every single person who calls Willow home to commit to being in a Rooted group. Because Rooted is not just a, a Bible study. It, it, it's not just curriculum. It's a dynamic 10-week discipleship experience that not only teaches us spiritual rhythms uh, like prayer, Bible study, sharing our stories, and breaking free from those things in our lives that hold us back, but but Rooted helps us experience those rhythms in community with other people. Our team is so excited about Rooted and the potential impact for our church that our Willow Espanol community translated the content for Spanish speakers. <laughs> so cool. And our Willow friends adapted the content for teens and adults with intellectual disabilities. It's fascinating. It's awesome. And this this really, it's an all church thing that we're doing, Rooted. Whether you're already in a small group or not, really want to encourage you to experience Rooted together this fall. You can sign up right now at willowcreek.org slash Rooted. Okay, and now I want to give you a little post-pandemic update. Um, uh, across the country, churches came back after the pandemic at about 55% of pre-pandemic attendance numbers. And that's about where Willow was as well. But happy to report that over the last 12 months, our church has grown in attendance by 27%. That is really encouraging. And we love just watching more and more people come back to church. Um, and like I shared with you this spring, we set a goal to have a balanced budget going into 2023. That was a priority for us. And in order to do this, we had to walk through a really difficult right-sizing of our staff earlier this summer uh, to match our current attendance and giving levels. And that work has allowed us to reach a balanced budget for 2023. We think that's going to be possible. And the way we did that was we reduced the percentage of our staffing costs from 70% to 50% of our overall budget, which is a pretty healthy place as we benchmark against other churches around the country. Uh, let me give you some good news. Uh, we have emergency reserves of about four months of expenses. That's really strong. Uh, and in case there's any financial crisis, I feel like that's a good place for us to be. Some more good news. I want to celebrate with you that earlier this year, 1,450 households 
took their next step by increasing their generosity. Uh, That is super encouraging. Since January, 891 people have given for the very first time to Willow. That's a 38% increase in first time givers compared to 2021. You know this, it's a big deal to give for the first time to a church. And I just wanna say to all of you who gave for the first time or who are faithfully giving or who have increased your giving, I just wanna say thank you. Now, uh, as it stands right now at the end of the summer, our giving is behind 16% of what we projected. We had, we had a, a guess and we're behind 16% of that. And though it's typical to see a dip in giving over the summer months, it's gonna make it that much more important as we look to the rest of the year heading towards Christmas and, and our end of the year giving opportunities that I need to encourage you to be thinking and praying now about what your next step in generosity might be. If you have the capacity to increase your giving to Willow throughout the rest of this year, can I just encourage you to please pray about that and and do it. Do what God tells you to do. Your generosity can help us close 2022 without having to dip into our reserves. And that would be a phenomenal place for us to be going into 2023 with a balanced budget. Now, hey, I get it. (laughs) Finances are tough right now. We got gas prices and inflation. And for me to talk about financial pressure for the church, uh, if you're like a lot of people, it's like, hey, there's financial pressure in my home. And I get that, that's weighing on a lot of us. And I I just wanna say, pray about what God would have you do and just do what God has called you to do. And I'll say this as well, our team has put together a resource with 10 ways to alleviate financial stress. Uh, And if you sign up at willowcreek.org slash give, you can check out that resource. All right, Willow, God is healing our church. That's, That's the phrase that I would use looking at this year that God is healing our church. And there are lots of great ways for you to take your next step with God. And the best way to stay in the know uh, is to just simply download the Willow app and make sure you're signed up to receive the emails and you can stay up to date on everything that's going on. Now, we have so many things to celebrate. Looking back on, on this year so far, 2022, and as we look towards the end of the year, I'm anticipating many life change stories as people connect with God, connect with the church, and connect with their purpose through Rooted. I am convinced now more than ever that because of Jesus, that we can say with confidence that the best is yet to come. All right, so I have the fun job tonight. I mean, every, every part's fun, right? But I get to share some ministry updates of where we are going as a church this fall and what is happening in all of our different ministries. And I think the last time we were kind of together for updates was maybe at the end of the spring, beginning of summer. And it was right before or right around when we had launched our 10 o'clock service. And so over the summer, we have gotten positive, great feedback about the 10 a.m. service. But I keep getting questions every Sunday. When are we going back to two services? I really like 10 o'clock service. What's going on here? And so I just want to speak to that for a second. Um, Because the truth is, the reason why we moved to the 10 o'clock in the beginning was to build community as a church family. We have come out of a long period of isolation We wanted everybody to know who was in their church and to feel like we were all on mission together. This morning I was in a meeting with Pastor Jason and he reminded our staff that true joy is experienced in community with others and community with Jesus. And I think over the summer it has been good to feel joy in our church. And so we want to continue growing that and we want to continue experiencing that. And so right now, Every week, uh, Pastor Jason's going to get into our attendance a little bit more in a second, but um, we are at less than 50% capacity in this space. So we feel confident in saying that we can continue to meet in this sanctuary um, for the foreseeable future until we feel like we're no longer safe and our attendance is getting too big or whatever. But 
What I will say is that our children's ministry is growing. And if you have been across the street, particularly in the preschool and kindergarten, uh, not kindergarten, preschool and under classroom, it is fun in there. And you really gotta love little people to like say that it's fun because if you're not a little person, it's, yeah, I got some friends from Willow Kids here. It, it's a little crazy. So we're mindful of our attendance in Willow Kids. And that's probably going to be the first indicator that will bump us to a uh, two services again. And so right now we don't see that happening. Um, like immediately, but we will keep you updated. So I just wanted, that's not really a great answer to the when are we moving, I don't know. But we like 10 o'clock, it feels good, we're gonna build the joy, and we're gonna keep our children's ministry safe and as fun as possible um, for as long as we can. And speaking of children's ministry, if you are a parent of a Willow kid, or if you are a volunteer, then you already know that this past Sunday was Nadine Russell's last Sunday with us. She um, has been an excellent uh, pastor for our children's ministry, and she told us actually when she took the job that it was going to be a short-term assignment because her heart is in Florida. That's where her extended family is from. Um, that's where her mom is, and her mom is elderly and has struggled with some health battles over the past couple years, and so she has had this huge desire to be back in Florida with her family. Um, and over the summer, like a good sister, her sister's one of her best friends, she found her a, an incredible job, and unfortunately, Nadine's timeline was a little bit faster than what I was hoping for, but... In God's goodness, um, we have already interviewed a bunch of people for that position, and we are down to two candidates, and both of them are terrific. And so I'm hopeful that in the next few weeks we'll have a new update for that. But in the meantime, um, myself and Brian Cheney are stepping into Willow Kids, and Brian Cheney is actually in charge of all of the Willow Kids pastors from all of our campuses, and so our students are in great hands um, on Sundays, and so we're committed to continuing to provide an environment where kids feel seen and known and loved and cared for, um, not just by our volunteers, but ultimately uh, by God. So that's what we've got going on. Now, tonight, Pastor Kay, she oversees our junior high and high school ministries. She is off today. And in fact, she's gone the next two weeks because she's getting married this weekend. So she had asked me if I would share an update on behalf of JHM, our junior high ministry, and HSM. So our junior high ministry meets at 10 o'clock in the White Chapel. If you ever see when you come out of service, there's just like a bunch of teenagers running around. That's, those are our friends from JHM. And they hang out right on the patio. They wait for their moms and dads after service. And they are a fantastic community. If you are looking for a place to serve and plug, get plugged in, I cannot recommend JHM enough. Um, not only do they meet here every Sunday, once a month they do what is called TPH, which stands for The Parties Here. And they meet at our ministry center downtown, and it's just a fun night for them to invite their friends so that their friends can get connected into a church community that loves them, accepts them, and cares for them. For them. But in November, they have an additional event called The Weekend. And what it is, is it's going to be two days where students are going to pick, get picked up from here and take a bus to our Huntley campus on Friday night after school, and then they'll come back here. So they'll spend the night at home, at their own homes, and then again on Saturday, we'll take a bus again back to the Huntley campus. And that weekend, those two days, they're going to study the life of David and they are going to have an opportunity to worship, an opportunity to play and hang out and just really help them solidify making their faith their own. And I remember when I was in junior high, I got a chance to go on one of these tiny little like day retreats. That was the first time I feel like I really fell in love with the Bible and where I really understood how to read God's word and that it wasn't just some ancient text, but it was something that was relevant to me as a middle schooler. And so that's my prayer that that happened happens um, for our students during the weekend. And I would love for you just to be praying that that happens too. It's the first week in, first weekend in November. Kay will send out more information when she gets back for parents to register. But 
Thank you for your generosity and your commitment to students in our church because then we're able to support them and do these cool initiatives and we're able to offer scholarships for families who need it. And so I'm just so grateful to be a part of a church that recognizes that the next generation is also the current generation and is committed to helping this generation choose to follow Jesus, not just right now while they're in our homes, but when they go off. And so the last update that I wanna give you for our students is about our high school ministry. So HSM had a big shift at the start of this ministry season. They used to meet on Wednesday nights at the ministry center in downtown Wheaton, and now they are meeting Sunday nights here at Wheaton Academy from 5 to 6 p.m. And the, one of the primary reasons for our ministry change was because we are continually learning more information about how to help this generation follow Jesus for forever. You know the statistics. I do not need to remind you, but lots of students walk away from their faith after they graduate. And it is a huge problem. And so we are committed as a church to doing everything we can to help students stay in their faith. And what research shows us, we've been partnering with a Fuller, Fuller uh, Seminary, in California, they've done a ton of research on it. What they have found is that students who engage in the life of the church in addition to their own student ministries, meaning they go to church with mom and dad for worship or they serve in another ministry, they are more connected to the church. Therefore, they are more likely to continue with church after graduation. And that's our desire. Our desire is that kids follow Jesus every single day of their life from here on out. And that they know that church is a place where they are accepted, loved, and cared for. So by moving off of a service time, um, that allows students to have multiple ways to connect with our church. It allows them to serve. It allows them to come with mom and dad. Um, and being here on Sunday nights allows us to do a new thing that we have not done in a long time. And I know this is in line with one of Gary's favorite things. You just caught my eye, Gary. We're starting a sports ministry for our high schoolers. So in October, we're gonna do some sports leagues and we're really gonna try to um, support this generation as best as possible. We know they have had a rough past four years. Um, we know that, oh, well, COVID was not four, it felt like four years, but oh my goodness, 2020 was like two years ago. See, it aged me, not in a good way. Um, so we want to really make sure that they feel connected and loved and supported, and we are going to be intentional about doing that in any way possible. Um, but we also know that it's been a rough journey at our church for our high school, minister, our high school students. Um, but we've had some staff transition, and it's, it's just been hard in particular, and so we recognize that, and we are committed to helping to create an environment at that high school ministry that every student wants to be a part of it, but we need your help. So if you are a parent of a high schooler, um, we are committed to supporting you and partnering with you, but we can't do that if you don't encourage your student to come. And we know Sundays, sometimes students are like, oh, this is my only night that's free. That's why it's on Sunday nights, because you guys are too busy on Wednesday. So we, we changed off of Wednesday to accommodate the request of parents, and so we are just saying, please, I know students can be difficult sometimes, but sometimes it's a little bit of our responsibility to encourage them out the door and to be a part. So if I can help with that, or if you have any questions or ideas, um, please send me an email. I would love, would love to partner with you and your family in that journey. Okay, so now let's jump to adult ministries. Our women's ministry has previously been meeting once a month uh, for di uh, discipleship and community and fellowship and studying God's word together. Lindsay has been doing such a fun job of leading us through that. We pushed pause on the summer because summer is crazy for everybody and our goal was to restart in October. But this is kind of a good problem. So many women in our church signed up to do Rooted that when I was looking through the list of who normally comes on Monday nights, I was like, these are all the same women that are in Rooted. And we have so many Monday night Rooted groups that are happening that we're really gonna make it difficult for people to decide, do I go to Rooted? Do I go to women's Bible study? You go to Rooted, that's what you do right now because you just heard Pastor Dave, we're focusing on Rooted. So. We're gonna push pause on the women's ministry. We will do a community event right when Rooted is over. So in 10 weeks, we're gonna do another fun Advent event like we did last year um, that we will give you more information when the time gets closer. So that's what's going on with women's ministry. The men's ministry, 
you know, a lot of people from the men's ministry are also doing Rooted, but guys have more time. So let's just, let's just say what it is. And they like their golf. So September 30th, there is a men's golf event. It's during the day, but then there's going to be an evening dinner. So if you can't get out of work or you're like me and don't really get why golf is appealing. Just kidding. I didn't say that. I, golf is awesome. Um, I, don't, I don't know anything about golf. So, okay. I should stop talking. Uh, there's a dinner afterwards that they would love for you to come and be a part of. You will learn more information about that this Sunday and how to sign up and register if you want to participate in either one of those things. So the next ministry that experienced the most change this summer is our care center. And I know that's why a good number of you are here tonight to learn about what is going on with our care center. So in the spring, we had some staffing transitions and Pastor Scott asked us to push pause on the care center and to really evaluate during the summer if we we were doing, um, if we were using our resources in the best possible way to be good stewards of what God has given us. And so before the care center was a mobile supplementary food pantry. And since COVID, it really has been like a drive up service where we have fantastic volunteers that would load food and groceries into our neighbor's cars and they would kind of continue on their way. But in this past season, we have learned uh, there was a volunteer team that assembled and they did a gap analysis and they partnered with uh, People's Resource Center, with the Northern Illinois Food Bank, and a couple other ministries to really figure out what is the greatest need in the DuPage area. How could we best be loving and supporting our community in a way that is maybe being missed right now? And it came to our attention that there are a lot of mobile food pantries. So we were just like an extra one, which is great. That was serving a need and it was helping our community. But a greater need came to our attention and that was seniors who are on a fixed income and are experiencing food insecurities. And so we are partnering with Wood, Law, Wood, remind, what? Wood Glen. There we go. See, so many things to remember. Thank you, ladies. Wood Glen Senior Center. They are at the intersection of 64 and 59, and they are a group of wonderful individuals who are in desperate need of groceries. In fact, this past year, their rent went up, but um, so that leaves them even less money to be able to spend on groceries. And so we've got Cynthia and Judy and Peggy. Do you guys want to say hi? Everybody should know these three. They are like Wonderful, wonderful. The three of them have been um, doing such a good job at leading, leading this charge of trying to figure out what we're going to do to better support our community and to be an example. Um, and so starting in November, we're going to do our first, it's called Senior Connect. So we're not going to call it Care Center anymore because that's going to get confusing because people are going to associate the old care center with what we're doing now. So it's Senior Connect. It's a grocery mart. And can I just tell you, I'm actually really excited about this because since COVID has happened, we have lost the relational equity with our neighbors. If you served at the care center previously, you would see the same people and you'd be able to talk to them in line and build relationship and actually do ministry instead of just meeting a tangible need. Um, that's been lost. And so now we are being invited into the senior community, and I am so excited to see what type of ministry can happen outside of just meeting their tangible need. So the, these three ladies are going to be in the lobby after service. They need lots of help. They need lots of volunteers. If this is something that sounds interesting to you, please stop by their table out in the lobby and sign up for it. And then the last announcement, which is just really quick, is Rooted. If you have not heard us talk about Rooted in the past couple weeks, you must be sleeping through announcements because we're talking so, I'm having like Rooted dreams at night. We're talking so much about Rooted. But I have good news. This evening, right before we got up, I checked our registration and we have 131 people signed up to go through Rooted, which is incredible if you think about the fact that we had 301 people at church this past Sunday and not all of, like 200 of those are adults. So thank you church 
for responding to the ask to participate in something because I am incredibly grateful. Um, I've had this like secret prayer goal that we would get to 150. I was like, 100 will be my goal. That will be like, if we can get 100 people in our church to do Rooted, I'll be so thankful. But I was like, God, if you want to like surprise us, 150 would be so cool. So maybe you're not supposed to share a secret goal. And as I'm saying that, I'm just realizing I probably shouldn't have said that. But anyways, uh, to accommodate the growing number of people that are interested in Rooted, uh, Pastor Jason has so graciously offered to host an additional small group because lots of our small groups are at capacity right now. And so on Mondays during the day, I think we said from 10 to 1130 at the ministry center, uh, Pastor Jason is going to lead a Rooted group. So that just opened up tonight. If you have not registered, we're going to put a QR code on the screen. Or if you were thinking about registering or you know that there's somebody in your small group who hasn't registered yet, registration is going to close tomorrow. So this is like your last chance to sign up for Rooted. Got it? Okay, good. I talked way longer than I think I was supposed to. So now let's welcome up Lane. Hey, everybody. It's very rare that I get up here, so it's kind of fun. Hey, do you guys remember these? Do you remember what we used to do with these? Um, we're actually going to start um, passing the plate, even though these aren't technically plates. We're going to pass the starting this Sunday again, because we don't, we've realized like there's, this is a willow wide initiative. So every campus is doing this. And so um, we're going to start doing that this Sunday. So give us grace, give us a little bit of grace with that. Um, but hopefully you're going to start to see up behind me. Um, there's also an app for my well. Um, so my well is still going to be the primary place we'd like you to give, um, but we also don't want people to miss out who would like to give and maybe aren't so tech savvy or for whatever reason don't want to give online. And so um, folks can still do that and they can sign up for the Dollar Club and they can also sign up for just their um, regular giving there. So um, when we start doing this again on Sunday, Jesse's going to help us because he's amazing and he's been doing it for years. And it's been a minute since we've done it. So um, the second thing I want to um, talk to you about is on Sunday, maybe the last two Sundays, you've seen West Chicago police um, here on Sunday. So first of all, there's no threats. There's no immediate danger. There's nothing like that going on. This is, an, again, this is another Willow-wide initiative. And so um, every campus is doing this. We've partnered with local law enforcement departments to just kind of um, uh, amp up a little bit of our security. So we have security teams at every campus, but this is just to kind of supplement that and um, give um, especially new people coming to church um, maybe just a little bit more of, of security and just kind of that, that safety kind of issue. So um, we're excited about that. And please, you can talk to them. They're really nice people. So if, you, um, if, you, if they're out of their car um, and they're standing on the sidewalk, please, by all means, tell them thank you for doing this for us. Um, that's just a really cool partnership. And again, will a wide partnership in that. So um, not only are we amping up the level of security and safety for our congregations, but we're also starting to get out in the communities more in some of these areas. So excited about that. So. Thanks, guys. And you'll look out, look for these on Sunday. All right, we'll finish out the uh, updating approach and then we'll shift gears, like I said, and talk about some local vision. Um, I want to give you some numbers, and these are really fresh for me as a new person, but nonetheless, I'm happy to report them. And so if we could have some slide help, I want to go through where uh, the charts are in regards to our attendance, and this would be attendance for Sunday gatherings. And we've got in-person attendance right now on the screen, and then the next slide in a moment will show you combined. Um, and yeah, let's just stay here because it has the previous one as well. And so you can see that... Um, by the end of August, we were at about 297 people for in-person attendance and 152 people for online. 
As you heard just a moment ago, uh, that 297 has surpassed into the 300 mark as of last Sunday, and so that's a very good trend. You can see that it started to decline a little bit here recently after um, a strong beginning of the year, and that probably had two factors associated with it. I mean, all of this is just sort of interpretive guessing, but one, we were heading into the summertime where travel is heavy and people are mobile and all over the world, and the other thing is we had uncertainty around our campus with what was going to happen with our campus pastor to roll as that announcement started to roll out. Those are two things that we think about there that could have affected that. But the good news is that we're back. Fall is here. We have a new season upon us with leadership, and great things are happening. The other thing I want to point out is that on the online attendance, you can see that it's, it's going down. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing, right? So it's not that we don't want people to be joining us online. That is not the point. But I think the first way that we look at that is, oh my, that's good. More people are joining us in person because it's just a very powerful thing when that happens. Um, but it has kind of plateaued a bit at 152, which is probably a good thing in a sense. And so I just want to put the ask out there that for those of you that are aware of people who are still more regularly worshiping online. That is a very welcome thing. That is a great thing. We embrace that. But it's not necessarily the best thing for everybody because relationship and connection and being in the tangible felt presence of God in worship is indescribable, and you can't get that online in the same way. So if you know some friends or some former or current small group members or whoever that are still hanging out in the 152, uh, put in a good word for us that great things are happening on Sundays at the 10 o'clock, just like Sandy said. Uh, with that, let's go to giving. This will be another similar chart of giving. Um, don't get confused, the blue is last year. So the blue is calendar year 2021. The yellow is our current year. And this shows you that um, by the end of July, we were at averaging $21,631 of, of weekly giving for that month and kind of where we're at. Um, there's a bit of a decline, again, into the summer months and maybe related to uncertainty, uh, but the great thing about giving at Willow is, and Willow Wheaton specifically, is that we have extraordinarily good amounts of giving and generosity. And this is not an area that I am worried about. I know that the capacity for generosity here and in the world is only going to increase. But I want to recognize the wonderful history of giving at Willow Wheaton. You, you have a bit of a legacy in this church. And I can say that as a new person because I heard about it already in my recruiting interview. So HR was telling me about you and your consistency of giving. And especially through the pandemic, per capita giving was really strong. And this is part of who we are. We're good givers at Willow Wheaton. And this is kind of the picture of that right now. And then let's look at how that impacts the overall budget on the next and final slide. These are year-to-date numbers for calendar year, fiscal year uh, budgeting. And you can see that contributions um, through the end of July, sorry, I said August a moment ago, but through the end of July w were 814,000. And then the budget, the budgeted amount for revenue through contributions was 988,000. So from a giving standpoint, we were down. Uh, we're off budget from a giving standpoint by $174,000 through July. However, the good news is that because of the diligence of the staff, the resourcefulness of the staff, and all of those things, we're not behind budget that amount because we've made some ground up on the expense side, which is always the great thing in church budgeting. You have what's happening with contributions and you have what's happening in expenses. And so the two work together. And so with that savings rate of less than budgeted expenses of 75,000, you can see that our gap is less than 100,000. It's at 99,000 at this particular time, again, through July. So we have a really good chance to finish strong with a good chunk of the year still remaining. And if you noticed on that previous giving chart, uh, last year in the blue, phew, it rocketed up starting in November and in December. The greatest amount of money, this is beyond the church, by the way, the greatest amount of money that goes out of people's pockets to charity or church happens in November and December across the world, across the country. 
And so that's going to be a strong season for us. And like Pastor Dave said, already be thinking about how God might lead us to finish the year strong. So those are the numbers things. Let's, uh, let's switch gears and go into where are we more locally as a church. And this all comes under the umbrella of what Pastor Dave said is happening in this term, term three, September through the end of the year, under the banner of loving people. Did you catch that? So kind of what we're all trying to focus on in this next term, September through December, is loving people here as part of Willow's vision. And um, yeah, it's... I want to start by loving people in this room, if that's okay, before I go big picture. So I want to invite the staff forward. Any staff person that's in the house, uh, why don't you come up here? Exactly. And Alan, can he, can he not leave his post? He can leave his post. Give him a round of applause. So we have four with me, five of us here. As you heard tonight through Sandy's sharing, Kay is getting married and Nadine is in Florida. So that's why they're missing this evening. Pretty good excuses. Um, but for anybody that may be new, uh, this is Lane McLaughlin. He's our operations manager. Sandy Riggs, associate campus pastor. Veronica Burlock, a worship pastor. And Alan Riggs, production manager leader. And the reason I want to bring them up is because I want to love on them a little bit. Uh, the other thing I've been hearing as I get brought into Willow Wide is from all over all of the campuses how great the Willow Wheaton staff are. That is not me. That is these people right here. And it's a real thing. It really is a real thing. Uh, I can say from the moment I met them six weeks ago tonight, I say yes, that's absolutely true. Because even in an interview setting, about halfway through the interview as we were kind of getting to know each other, I felt like a breakthrough had happened and we just connected. And I was like, wow, these people are legitimate. These people are real and these are people that I really love. And so I experienced that and I, I'm not surprised that there's buzz all across Willow Creek about these people and the others that aren't here. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that, that we're very, very blessed. And I want to give just a few words of affirmation. These are things that I have discovered, uh, just a few words about who our staff team are. They are spirit-filled, they are smart and kind, they are talented, authentic, humble, invested, and beloved. And those are just some of the words. And so, yeah, give them a round of applause. Um, they deserve that recognition. And before they sit down, I want to point out our pseudo staff member, Lindsay Zareb. Why don't you stand up, Lindsay? Yeah. Lindsay is, stay up, stay up for a second, Lindsay. Lindsay is the Next Steps content manager for Willow Creek, and we stole part of her to be on our staff. Uh, she does get to spend Thursdays working remotely with us in the ministry center, so that's really awesome. And she is part of this group as well, so I just wanted you to know that. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So do you see how easy it is to love people? Just look around, take on the perspective of God, and, and, and pass that love on to others. But beyond that... Um, I want to talk about the extraordinary opportunity we have to love people in these next four months. These are some of the most pivotal, influential months in any given calendar year. And so we have significant months ahead of us and we have significant opportunity. So I want to take us to the early church and the one verse that describes first in all of the New Testament how the early church was. And you can see it now here on the screen. It's Acts 2.42. You're not surprised because you're Bible read and you also have history with Willow Creek. You know that this very verse is one of the foundational verses for our founding. And even our senior pastor, Dave Dummett, had founded a church by the title of 242 
from this premise. And so this is very much a part of our story, but this is part of God's story. This is part of the church. So what's happening here is in Acts 2, we see the Holy Spirit come to earth, come to who? To the believers for the very first time. And who sent the Holy Spirit, by the way? God, specifically which person of the Trinity? You got a choice of two. Jesus, exactly. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. He sent it to the believers, right? And it came upon them, and we had the Holy Spirit, and that thing has been pumping, that person has been pumping through us ever since. But what happened after that is Peter, Peter the Rock, who Jesus prophesied was going to start the church, this was his moment to start the church, it's my favorite sermon of all time in Acts 2. Peter gets up because people are like, what is going on? What just happened? Who can interpret this for us? And Peter gets up and he preaches the very first gospel message. And it's really, really rich. And out of that, 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people. And that is what precedes this, where it says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. This This and a phrase coming out of this is what I want to encourage us to be about as Willow as a whole loves people in this term and we locally try to do that. I want us to follow this for Willow Wheaton. And so the first thing that pops out here that's just hard to pass and miss is that all of the believers, not some of the believers, all of the believers, the 3,000 who were just saved and the originals and the people that are being added to daily, they did what? They devoted themselves to the church. Now, what we see is the activities of the church that they devoted themselves to. And they're really, really important because this gives us the four essentials of what it is like to be the church, the four essentials. But before we get into those four essentials, they were devoted. What does that mean? They attended to this constantly. They courageously were the church. They sacrificially were the church. They persevered as the church. They were devoted. And they were devoted specifically to the teaching, to fellowship, which is community, to meals, which as you can see also included the Lord's Prayer, and to prayer, the the essentials. And if we read on, I think I would have to add a fifth, which is generosity. But we're going to focus on the four. These were the four essentials that the early church were about as they devoted themselves to these things. And this is how we do it. It's back to the basics. It's back to the essentials. It's teaching, fellowship, meals, including communion and prayer. May I invite us as Willow Wheaton from now until the end of the year to try to lean in a little bit more, to be more devoted to these four things through the programmatic life that we have, because honestly, our programs and our ministries have these things in them. Rooted, by the way, covers all of these, so that's an easy one. But beyond our ministries or our formal ministries, how about just in your life and in my life? How about if we are devoted to teaching, fellowship, meals, and prayer? Now, I don't have to tell you the different ways that that can all be done. It's it's obvious, and you've been walking with God for a long time. You know. You've been doing this. This is just an opportunity, I think, for us to go back to the beginning and say, oh, yeah, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. And in some respects, nobody says we can't do any of these things. We don't need to wait for the Willow Wheaton staff person to tell us to go do these things. We don't have to get permission from anywhere to go do these things because these are the things the church does. Now, what happened as a result of the early church doing these things? It's really, really quite extraordinary. And it's in the next verse, verse 43. A deep sense of awe came over them all. All the believers devoted themselves to these four things, and then a deep sense of awe awe, came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And so 
one of the most underrated things about God in the Bible is that He is an awe-producing God. He is an awe-inspiring God. And God is always bringing out the awe factor. What is the awe factor? Awe is the wonder of God. It's that extraordinary thought and feeling of, wow, God, wow. And here's what it means in the original language. Listen very carefully. It's a breath. It's a breath of, wow, wow. Can you believe God did that? That's what those four things lead to. That's what people who are devoted to the church produce with God. He shows up and there's an awe. And I think that this is what is lost right now in the big C church, especially in the United States. In the whole world, because we've all been through a very difficult pandemic, and we've just had the breath of life taken out of us. It's not... I mean, literally, COVID takes your breath. But also, beyond a pandemic, if you look at the church in our nation, not the nation's church, the local church throughout the United States, you can see that there's been a lot of pruning and a lot of challenges where the breath has just been taken out of a lot of us. Have you ever had the literal breath knocked out of you? Show of hands. How many athletes are in the room? How many parents are in the room? Yeah, it does, isn't that terrible? Like, the only times I've had that happen to me are when I'm playing football and the football gets lodged between the ground and my stomach. And it literally takes the breath out of me. And it's a horrible feeling. You, you are anxious. You are in pain. You are just in a terrible, terrible condition because the breath has been knocked out of you. And that's kind of what has been going on in the Big C Church most recently. And that's why I say that what we need back is the wonder of God, <sighs> which comes by being faithful at being the church. We be the church, the wonder and the awe is going to come back, and we'll have that amazing experience of, can, can you believe who God is? This is what He did. This is what He's going to do. He is amazing. And wouldn't it be cool if at Willow Wheaton we had a growing sense of the awe of God? And so, this is what I would ask of us to consider doing in this next season. Under the banner of loving locally, loving people locally, to be devoted to being the church and raising the awe factor of God. To be devoted to being the church and then seeing the awe factor of God grow. How does that sound? Some head nods, some whispers, that sounds great. Some claps. I mean, I don't know about you, I need the awe of God. I, I could use some of that. That's, that's just, it, it's a, it's a life-giving thing and it spreads, and we need it. We need it as the church, but the world needs it. The world is looking for awe. Where do they look for awe? They, they go to concerts. None of this is necessarily bad. They go to concerts. They go to theatrical performances. They go out and they get extraordinary food. They go to festivals. They're constantly looking for awe, and that's great because God's in all of that. But what if we're giving a sense of awe ourselves because God is so great? Now, there's the inside and the outside ways that you can do this, all right? So if you're involved in the Willow Wheaton Ministries, you're doing those four things that were up here a moment ago. Thank you. That is amazing. Some of, the, some of our ministries do all of these things. Thank you. And keep doing it. But don't just do it there. It also happens outside of the walls of our church. Um, do this with other people, other Christians outside of Willow, other people who are not in the church because, believe it, they are seeking the awe of God. Uh, we can 
We can be teachers ourselves as we share testimony, as we share scripture, as we talk about the message on Sunday with our friends, even our unchurched friends. We can invite people into our homes and have fellowship. We can take people out for coffee. We can notice them on the street and have a simple conversation. We can share meals. We can literally share meals through our new Senior Connect ministry. We can share meals in our homes. We can, we can do that. We can buy people's meals. And we can pray. Please be reminded that people who don't know God rarely decline offers to be prayed for. So we can do all of these things in Willow Wheaton, and we can do all of these things in the world, and we're asking you to be devoted to being the church and raising the awe factor of God. Thank you for being in this. Thank you for considering going to another level of being devoted. As staff, we celebrated the staff, but I can say this for all of the staff, myself included, it is not about us. We are here to equip you, and we're here to equip you in this next term in these ways. With that being said, let's pray. Let's pray and let's respond in worship. Uh, help me out with some things that we could pray about tonight. Let's make a mental list because we're going we're gonna to spread out and in small groups just kind of pray out loud as best as we can, if that's okay. And so let's create a mental prayer list. After being here tonight, just shout out some things that we could put on our mental prayer list. What, what, would, be, what would be some things we could pray about? Rooted. Rooted launch. Rooted. Exactly. Very good, Sandy. What else? Senior Connect, that is another incredibly timely and good answer. Rooted, Senior Connect, keep it coming. Oh, yes, absolutely. Kay and Soren's wedding, I love that. That is this weekend, correct? Yeah. Church finances, exactly. Yeah, thank you for that. That's wonderful. High school ministry, and not just the schedule change, but like Sandy was saying, being a part of these young people's lives. Very good. Let's pray about being devoted to being the church. How's that sound? Check. Let's pray about that as a big picture. I'll add that one. Any others? How about you? I'll take some prayer. <laughs> Never turn down prayer. That's very thoughtful. That's a really good start. Uh, let's stand up and we'll move about here in a minute. Um, just move about the room wherever you're comfortable with whomever you're comfortable. If you, if you want to pray as a couple, that's great. With friends or people in your row, that's great. If you kind of find yourself like, who should I pray with? Then come to the front because we'll have Sandy and Lane and my wife Jody here where they're happy to pray with you as well. So let's have a season of prayer. Thank you.
would you just sing this out with me? Sing all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great are you, Lord Oh, lift it up All the earth will shout prayer with me. God, we do. We sing great. You are great and you are faithful. And it's the awe of you that even becomes our very breath. And we ask for more of that, more of that in our lives and more of that in this world. We pray that you would help us to be your church again. Give us strength and wisdom and provision as we go ahead into this next season and we do all the things that you've put on our heart at Willow Creek Community Church in Willow Wheaton. Thank you for being with us tonight. We pray for your blessing as we go. We pray for you to bring us home safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here again tonight, everybody. Have a great rest of the night. <laughs>